White Little, of course, did an interview last month, about a month ago, uh, with Blay Disgusting, talking about his upcoming memoir. Um, he also talked a little bit about Natty Knox. Um, I've interviewed um, two of the leads in that film. I hope you'll check that out when you get a chance. Um, but in the interview, of course, Halloween 4 comes up, and Dwight Little um, states that he has, uh, you know, he's, he's talked to Malik Akkad, he's excited for the uh, TV series that's in development, and um, sure, would love to come back and do a Halloween 4 requel, basically. You know, we've discussed ideas that yeah wouldn't it be cool if you know since they've done the requel the Lori Strode we requel more than once now they did it with H2O they did it again with 2018 why not do the Jamie Lloyd requel right just pick up her story 40 years later and just ignore parts five and six presumably right um and it sounds like Dwight Little would would be uh, all for doing something like that in this interview um, which is cool to hear him acknowledge that he'd be down. Um, Danielle Harris has said that she'd be down. You, you'll remember my interview with Danielle going back as far as late 2021. Um, I asked her about coming back, and she said, yeah, if it was to do Jamie somehow, that uh, she, she could get into. And, um, you know, obviously she just worked with D Dwight on Natty Knox. Um, their friends. She just shared a throwback picture today, as a matter of fact, on her social media, um, talking about how Dwight is the only director. Um, you know, he discovered her in H4. They worked together and a few years later in uh, the Steven Seagal film, Mark for Death, and then all these years later brings her back in Daddy Knox. Um, so, you know, it you know, the, the question, and, and again, I, I hesitate to even talk too much about this because, I mean, during our downtime, of course, I'm on YouTube. Of course, I'm, you know, algorithms suggest Michael Myers related content. So I've seen headlines on other channels and so forth um, that they're, you know, uh, Dwight Little has pitched Halloween 4 Part 2 to Malik Khan and all this. And, and, and look, I'm sure they've had conversations. I'm sure Malik has and probably is having all kinds of conversations and considering everything. Um, you know, and, and he says, I mean, here, yeah, here, let, let, let's pull up the actual quote here. This is bloody disgusting. Um... Little says, I would love to do it with Alan McElroy, writer from H2. He says, of course, we have to be invited, and I'm sure they have people that they're interested in, so we'll see how it plays out, but sure, I would jump into that in a minute if we could figure out how to make that work. And then he says, he goes on to say, uh, not only would I do it, I've actually pitched it. And he says, quote, you keep Rachel alive and follow through with Jamie and Rachel. Ellie Cornell is alive and well and living on the East Coast. And I just worked with Daniel Harris and she's a doll. I think that's a great movie. I think they should call it Halloween 4 Part 2. Just be upfront about it and say what it is because that's what it would be. In my own opinion, more than a TV show, I think that would get a lot of attention. So he's pitching it even as a is a movie. Um, so there's that. Um, and again, I would love to get more of where this story could go. And I do think that there is an audience and maybe a platform in a way to do that. But is that going to be the next feature film in this franchise? I don't think so. Um, could it be, as we've talked about some way, maybe incorporated into uh, the future TV series that's in development with Miramax. 
possibly. But you got to remember, there's still so, so, so many questions about this TV series. And, and so this, this brings us now to the future of this franchise. A lot of people are talking anthology because that'd be a cool way to go. But even if you're going to do an anthology, what type of anthology? Is it like an American Horror Story type by anthology where it's one story every season? Because if it's going to be that, you've got to really knock it out of the park season one to even get to do any of your other ones. And and I don't think Halloween 4 Part 2 is a way to knock it out of the park for season one if that's the way they're going to go. I think it'd have to be something brand new and fresh and then say maybe down the line we can look at doing requalized stories from some of our existing Choose Your Own Adventure timelines. That I could see. But I don't see them jumping out of the gate with a requalized, you know, story, be it Halloween 4 or anything, if that's the type of anthology they're going to do. I do think if that's the type of anthology they're going to do, it'd be really cool to say, look, this is our plan. We're going to, This year, it's an all-new story, you know, and in years future, we're not ruling anything out. Maybe it'll be requel type stuff. That'd be cool. On the other hand, what if it's like a creep show style anthology where like every episode is its own thing? Or like in creep show's case, every episode is two stories. Um, that now I could really see something like, again, Malik saying, all right, you want to do Halloween 4 part two? You, Danielle, you got. 60 minutes, do whatever you want. You got an episode of our first season of our end. You know what I mean? Like one episode. And yeah, some fans would say, oh, that's not enough. That's not, I don't know. That could be like just what the doctor ordered for something like that. At the same time, you could go back, you, you know, you can, you can do a resurrection requel. You could do a, a close out Rob Zombie's story differently. If, uh, if someone was so inclined, uh, they, you know, you could pick up, you know, what if they said every episode is different. It's its own thing. We're going to start off season one, eight to 12 episodes. And yeah, the majority of them are going to be brand new things. But within those new things, yeah, we're going to do one story that picks up with Jamie Lloyd, one story that picks up with Allison. And, you know, I don't know, one story that is set in the Silver Shamrock universe or something. I mean, that would be pretty innovative for a franchise that's always the one to be innovative and start the trend. It is usually this franchise that starts the trends. Um, but yeah, I don't see them, you know, banking a feature film or even really a whole s series on like that Dwight Little idea or really on any of the requel ideas that we discuss here. As cool as they could all be used in the TV format, I don't see them jumping into that. And again, I'm not basing this anything other than my own educated guess, speculation, and just, you know, how it would be to try to market something like that and so forth. And then there's another way that this series can go, which is it's not an anthology at all. It's what I've said from the beginning would be my first choice that it should be and I still hope it is going to be, and I still think it's probably most likely to be, honestly, give us that Dr. Loomis show. Young Loomis, you got 15 years from Michael, age 6 and 63, all the way to 78. 15 years of where Michael's sitting there doing nothing, and Loomis is slowly going mad, trying to help him, meanwhile helping other patients and uh, you could tell a lot of stories, set them all around Halloween time at Smith's Grove. You get a lot of seasons out of that. And yeah, you could just cast one kick-ass actor as our new Dr. Loomis. I still say that's the way to go. I still think if I had to guess and predict, sure, uh, I'll say that's where they're going to go. Um, I, I would be there for the anthology. That could be a lot of fun. Don't get me wrong. But there's so many questions now, and that is why it's very interesting. But I don't think time-wise, um, 
we're going to see this air this fall. I think realistically, we're going to start seeing announcements about the writers, maybe a showrunner, um, maybe some directors. I think a lot of that stuff is getting finalized as we speak. And I think moving into spring and this summer, we're going to start getting some concrete announcements about this thing. It's going to start taking shape, no pun intended. And we're going to start seeing uh, what this thing is going to look like. And wouldn't it be cool? Wouldn't it be so cool if by end of summer, early fall this year, production begins? We, we see that Instagram post from Miramax and, and from Trinkus. And, and they start up an official account for, you know, Halloween, the series, or whatever it's going to be called. Uh, Haddonfield, the series, or whatever. Um, and, and it's that slate saying, day one, scene one, you know, production officially underway. If that happens, it's totally conceivable that on October 31st, they gift us with, I don't know, something, an image of our one of our new characters, maybe one of our classic characters, some announcement, some, some title treatment, maybe who knows. And then they would take a whole year, finish production, do any reshoots that's necessary, edit it, etc. hype the living hell out of it all of next year, and then drop it on one of the, the major streaming networks. I would think, I mean, that'd be my vote. You know, that's a whole other thing. What kind of a series? They say TV series, but what is TV in 2024? I mean, does that mean literally like a network? It's going to air on Thursday nights on NBC or ABC or whatever? Or does that mean it's going to be like dropping new episodes every Sunday night on like Max or something? Or is it going to be like a Paramount Plus or... Are we going to get the whole thing dropped on Netflix on one night, you know, Halloween weekend, and we can binge all eight or ten episodes at once? That's a whole lot to consider, and the way it's going to be released, I would think, is going to influence a little bit, or maybe vice versa, um, the stories they're going to tell, you know? I mean, I mean, sometimes it's kind of cool to... To not be able to bench, to have a week in between episodes, to let it kind of kind of marinate in your head, you know what I mean? Uh, I, I know that's kind of old school. I'm like an old man, oh, you know, uh, way of watching shows. But you know, there's something to be said for waiting a week. Sometimes, not all the time, but anyway. Um, so that's my take on where we're at right now. Like I said, I don't have anything real concrete. Crete. Um, I've seen the quote unquote rumors and I wouldn't put much stock in any of that because again, I mean, people's first of all, definition of rumor is, is kind of loose. Um, but then again, on the other side of that, I did just play a clip from a few months ago of Malik Khan himself saying that, uh, when other rumors were surfacing just ahead of that event, that there's always a kernel of truth in that so um so there you go um give me your thoughts on all of this hey everybody i want to remind you that we have official merch that's right now available in the hdn spring store you can show your love for halloween every day all year round with official halloween daily news t-shirts many different designs are available many different styles colors all sizes including the original hdn classic our special triple m crew design for the michael myers monday regulars out there and our brand new what would john carpenter do design all of these are available like i said multiple sizes colors and styles on t-shirts and that's not all. We've got other merch available like mugs and stickers and lots of other cool stuff. Check it out now at the merch link in the description of this video.